Making $100,000 a year is validation that you're doing something right. And in this video, I want to go over how long it took me and what I had to do to make $100,000. What's up everybody? I am Jaspreet Singh from the MinorityMindset.com where money minds rethink rich. I used to read a lot of business books and money management books and investing books because they would teach you things that you can do with your money. Now, I read a lot of biographies because I like learning about how people became successful and a lot of times just hearing about how somebody else became successful can inspire you on your own journey. I knew I wanted to become successful since I was a kid. I don't know how, but I knew that I wanted to become successful because I saw how hard my parents were working. My parents are immigrants from a state in India called Punjab and I saw my parents working six or seven days a week, every single week with no vacations, with very little days off. And if you had a Saturday and a Sunday off together, this was considered a long vacation. So this was how I grew up and I knew that I wanted to give back to my parents. I knew that I wanted to become successful, that way I could give my family more things that we did not have. We were never poor and I never had to worry about where my next meal would come from and we had nice things. The problem was my parents were working all the time and they didn't have any freedom because they didn't understand financial education. Growing up, I was always pushed to do good in school because if I did good in school, then I could get into medical school and if I got into medical school, I could become a doctor which means I could make a lot of money every single year and I would be rich. And then I'd be able to take care of my family, I'd be able to take care of my community, and I'd be able to take care of myself and have a whole bunch of nice things, right? The problem was it takes a lot of time to become a doctor. I mean, I was 10 years old thinking about how I'm gonna become successful and I wouldn't become a doctor until I'm like 30 because now you have to go through college. After college, you gotta go to medical school. After medical school, you gotta go through residency. After residency, if you wanna be a surgeon and make the top dollars, then you gotta go into a fellowship. And then when you're like 30 years old, you'll finally be ready to enter the workforce and make the big bucks as a doctor. I'm an impatient person, so I couldn't wait that long. So when I was 10 years old, I started on my journey to become wealthy. The first thing I did was I started mowing my neighbor's lawns and I started delivering newspapers to my neighbors. I was making seven cents a house delivering newspapers and I was making $10 per home cutting people's lawns. That's when I realized that I was never going to become rich delivering people's newspapers because I'd have to deliver 100 newspapers to make $7. And then kind of a funny ending to that story, I went to go get my last paycheck of $14 from my newspaper company and I went to go get my check and they shut down. They went out of business and they still owe me $14. I had no idea what entrepreneurship was or what investing was. I didn't have investors or entrepreneurs in my family. So I just figured that the only way that you can make money was by going and working a job. And if you had a better job, if you got a good degree, you could get a better job, which meant you could make more money. But things started to change towards the end of my middle school career and into the beginning of my high school career because I learned to play this Indian drum called the dole. So the dole is this big drum and it's native to my state in India called Punjab and a lot of people play it nowadays at weddings. And I got the drum just because I liked the way it sounded. And so I learned to play it and I was at a wedding and the DJ at the wedding said, hey Jaspreet, you wanna play this drum at other people's weddings? I'll pay you to do it. So naturally I was like, you're telling me that I can get paid to play this drum? Heck yeah! When I first started off, I barely knew how to play and I was charging couples like $50 to play at their wedding. And in a few years, once I got a little bit better, I raised my rates to somewhere between $250 to $300 for one hour of me playing at your wedding. This was when I really started to learn about how money works because now I'm getting towards the end of my high school career and I'm still working a job. I'm working at Auntie Anne's Pretzels and they're paying me $5.85 an hour and I'm making less than minimum wage because I wasn't 18 years old. And so I'm working lots of hours, making very very little money and the only way I get paid is if I go into work and I clock in hours. But at the same time, I could go and work on a Saturday for one hour at a wedding and I could walk away with $250. It would take me two weeks to earn that much money working at Auntie Anne's Pretzels and I was earning that in one hour working at a wedding. Now I started to think, why am I making so much more money here than I am here? The reason is because I had a skill now and this skill wasn't something that everybody had and because you didn't have a whole bunch of people that you could just go to to hire, you had to go through me or one of the few other people that knew how to play their toll and so now you had to pay. See, in the wedding business, I was getting paid not for my one hour of time, I was getting paid for my years worth of experience and my years worth of practice. That's why I was able to charge so much more than when I was just working the cashier and making pretzels at Auntie Anne's because it takes someone a week of training to know how to run the cashier and how to make pretzels and how to run the business. So now I was a 16, 17 year old guy with a couple thousand dollars in my bank account and now I took this money and I invested it in myself in a new watch and into my car. My first big purchase was a $1,000 watch when I was in high school and this watch was completely studded up. The entire face had studs, crystals all over it 
and the strap of the watch was also lined with crystals all around it so it looked really cool and it made me look like I was rich and I was driving a Toyota Solaro which they don't make anymore and so anytime I had some extra cash I invested my money in my car because if I have a sweet looking car who's not gonna think that I'm rich so then I upgraded the headlights I put in some HIDs I upgraded my sound system I put in two 12 inch subwoofers I added tints to my car and then I almost put in butterfly doors onto my car you know the doors that go up like a Lamborghini but then my cousin talked me out of that thankfully you can tell I used to watch a lot of pit my ride so now I was making pretty decent money as a high school kid it wasn't a ton of money maybe a couple thousand dollars a month and this money would hit my bank account I barely had any expenses so then I would go out and spend this money and I started this teen party business back when I was in high school because the DJs that I was working with also told me that hey we can host teen parties for your friends and so I started running this other side business and so I had a little bit of money but anytime I made any money I would spend it because I wanted to invest this money in myself and make myself look rich and that's when I came across a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki and for the first time in my life I had heard about something called an asset and I heard about something called a liability now to put this in context English is my second language. I hated reading. I never read books. Even in my English class, I never finished any of the books that we had to read. I almost failed my English class in middle school. I could barely get through spark notes. And then now, when my dad gave me this book, he said I should read it. I was like, why do you think I'm going to read a book? I don't think I've ever read a book before this. And so why would I read this? Anyway, I was on a plane ride to India, and this is before planes used to have TVs in every seat. So I'm going to visit my family, and it's like a 20-hour flight, a 20-hour journey, and you sit on a plane, and you have nothing to do. You don't have an iPhone, you don't have an iPad, you don't have a TV in front of you. So I'm sitting there, I try to read my biology book, I try to do some studying, that didn't work. And then I pulled out this book, and for the first time in my life, I was interested in a book, and I couldn't put this book down. I read the book cover to cover and I could not believe what I was reading. If you haven't read the book, the book essentially tells you the difference between an asset and liability. It shows you what an investment is and it talks about the idea of creating passive income and multiple streams of income that we're using your money as a tool to make you wealthy. So now I enter college and I'm on my quest to become wealthy and I know that if I can just make $100,000 a year, I am going to be rich. So I enter my journey to make $100,000 a year when I'm in college. I didn't know what to expect college like my parents didn't grow up here and I didn't have mentors or coaches telling me what to expect in college so I went to college with my sleeping bag and my microwave not knowing what to expect because I didn't even bring a towel when I went to college and I slept in my sleeping bag for the whole first semester of college but as soon as I got to college I saw that everybody around me was partying and I couldn't believe it I thought that people would be spending their Friday nights and Saturday nights in the chemistry lab doing chemistry reactions, learning about how they could get a good degree so everybody could become a high paid professional like a doctor. Well, lucky for me, I was already in the entertainment business because I was hosting teen parties when I was in high school and I wasn't too into partying. I don't drink and I wasn't really too interested in going to the parties. So I decided to start hosting these parties. I started going to the local clubs and venues and I started talking to the venue owners, talking about how I could host parties here. And I I made a deal with them that way I don't have to pay them anything where now I would host parties and I would get half of the revenue that we get from the parties that we host. After a few hiccups early on I really started to get the hang of things and now business was booming. We were hosting an event pretty much every single weekend and sometimes two times a weekend and pretty much every event would pocket me at least a thousand dollars. During the school year we would host like one or two big parties a semester which would bring in even more money and then we wouldn't have any parties during the summer but during the semester I was averaging something like a thousand dollars a week from this business. Now I had more cash in the bank and I became very cheap. I did not want to spend a penny unless I had to because I was thinking about how I could potentially buy assets. How can I buy something that would make me money? And this was also around the time when real estate prices were at rock bottom. This was after the 2008 crash and real estate prices across the country, especially Michigan, which is where I lived, were so low where people were selling homes for pennies on the dollar. Now, I didn't really understand the real magnitude of everything going on because I was just seeing what was happening in front of me. To me, this was all normal because I never paid attention to the financial side of the world until now. So I had nothing to compare our economy to. This was when towards the middle of my college career that I started studying for the MCAT, which is the Medical College Admission Test. It's the test that you take to get into medical school because I still thought that I had to be a doctor because I thought that's how I became successful. And I liked this entrepreneurship stuff. I just didn't know that this was something that I could do for the rest of my life. I thought that it was just a hobby. So I'm studying for the MCAT and I was super bored and super annoyed studying for the MCAT. So anytime I took a break, I would go to finance.yahoo.com and 
every single day, every article talked about how the real estate market is crashed and about how home prices are super low. So then I started looking at homes available for sale. And I started looking at these properties and on August 22nd, I took the MCAT and on August 23rd, I closed on my first investment property. It was a condo about a thousand square feet and I bought it for $8,000 cash. That wasn't the down payment, that was the entire price of the condo. And the crazy thing is that just a few years before I bought this condo for $8,000, these same condos were selling for more than $100,000. Now all of a sudden I became a real estate investor. It took me a little while to figure out how the process works. I dealt with a lot of issues getting started as a real estate investor. But once all things were said and done, this property was rented out for $600 a month. And after all expenses, I was making somewhere between $250 and $350 a month every single month in profit and this was money that I didn't have to go to work to earn. Then towards the end of college, I was getting a lot more experience in my entertainment business. So we were making a little bit more money and we were doing more events. And that's when a few things happened. One, I realized that I hated this business that I was running because I wasn't into partying. I didn't like the entertainment industry. I didn't like doing all this. So I decided that I was not going to do this forever because this is not something that I wanted to do. I was making good money and the amount of money that we were making was growing but this was not something that I enjoyed. Second, I kept going into real estate. Anytime I had some extra cash, I used it to buy another home, which I would then rent out. And third, I realized that I wanted to be more involved with real estate and I wanted to build something more scalable. So now during my time in college, I was getting closer to the $100,000 a year mark, but that's when I realized that I didn't like what I was doing, so I shut it down and now I was taking five steps backward. I was building a business that had growing income, that I was growing revenues, but then because I realized I didn't want to be supporting a business, I didn't believe in, I then took five steps back and now I felt like I was starting the process all over again. From an income perspective, I was starting all over again because now I had steady cash flow and steady income coming from this business every time I hosted an event, but now I went down to zero. But on the second side, on a more educational thought side, I learned a lot learning how to build this business and learning how to grow this business. By this time, I had gotten my real estate salesperson's license, so I'm helping other people buy and sell their homes. I can help myself find investment properties. And then I learned about this thing called wholesaling real estate. I got to know the real estate broker that I was working under because she thought it was very interesting that I started working as a real estate agent when I was in college because I was the youngest agent in the office. And so she talked to me and I told her about how I was interested in real estate investing. And it just happened to be that she was a teacher in the real estate space. She used to teach this concept of real estate wholesaling and she gave me free tickets to her next seminar which I think she used to charge somewhere between $500 to $1,000 a ticket to attend but she gave it to me for free. So I went to the seminar in August and I remember this because it was right before school started and it was like three or four days long and during the seminar these two people came up and they started teaching this concept of wholesaling and I really was intrigued by it. The whole idea being you enter into a contract to buy a home below market value and then you take this contract and you sell it to somebody else who wants to buy the home either to live in or as an investor. So you might find a home that's worth $100,000. You enter into a contract to buy it for $85,000 because this homeowner cannot sell their home. And now you have a contract to buy the home for $85,000. And now you're going to flip this contract to somebody else for $90,000. And then you get to keep that $5,000 difference. So now you can sell the home to an investor who wants to buy the home for $90,000. Or you can sell it to a homeowner who wants to buy this home at a discounted price. So you have to be a good marketer. You have to know how to find somebody who can't sell their home. And you need to know how to find somebody to buy your home at a higher price than what your contract is. So the people that were teaching this concept said that if I wanted to learn more, I had to buy the program, which cost $3,500, which was a lot of money for me then because now I was no longer hosting events. I had a few rental properties, but they weren't paying me enough to now go out and just spend $3,500, but I did have some cash in the bank. So I decided to make this investment and it was a great investment. So I took the $3,500 out of my account and I purchased their course. And now I had this training on how to become a successful wholesale flipper. And I went through this training right away. By September, I was making calls and I spent an extra year in school. I did like a graduate program in real estate development because now I finished college and I didn't know what I was going to do and I didn't want to get a traditional job. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I knew that I liked real estate. So I found this real estate program and now I did this real estate program. But at the same time, I was working as a wholesaler because I knew that I wanted to do something on my own. So I'm in class, I'm finding people to call and then after class, I'm on the phone trying to get people to sell me their homes. So I invested $3,500 into this program program and in September I made zero dollars. In October I made zero dollars. In November I made zero dollars 
and in December, I made zero dollars. I was doing everything the program said. I kept making calls, I kept sticking with it, and day after day after day, as I kept getting rejected again and again and again, I kept making calls, and lucky for me, I was stubborn, because even after I made no sales in September and October and November and December, I kept going into January. In January, I closed my first wholesale deal and I walked away with $7,500, and in February, I closed two wholesale deals one for $7,500 and one for $10,000. And so I walked away in February with $17,500 into my pocket. And now I was on a roll. I knew that I had the path that I needed. I had the plan that I needed to get to $100,000 annually consistently. But that's also when I really started to think about long-term scalability because I was having the same issue with this wholesale business that I was with my event planning business. With my event planning business, I was making good money. The only problem was I would only make money if I hosted an event. With the wholesaling business, the same issue. I was making good money, better money here than I was before, but the problem was, if I wasn't on the phone, if I wasn't closing deals, I wasn't making any money. By this time, I owned three real estate properties that were cash flowing, that were paying me every single month, and that's when I decided that I didn't wanna do this wholesaling anymore because I didn't have the scalability that I wanted. So now, I started all over again. I felt like I was taking another five steps back because I tried something new, I figured out how it worked, I started making decent money, and then I canceled it because it didn't fit my long-term goals. Now again, financially, from an income perspective, I was starting over. Yeah, I did have some rental properties, but from an income perspective of what I was doing, I was starting all over again because I had something that I understood that I was making good money, but then I stopped this income. But on a mindset perspective, an education perspective, again, I learned so much more. I learned more about real estate. I learned more about how to sell. I learned more about how business works, which then I applied to the next things that I did. That's when I got on the internet because I learned that the internet was a place where I could build something scalable, things that I could sell. So then I started e-commerce businesses and I started other internet marketing businesses. And it took me a solid two or three years after that point. Now I entered law school because my parents weren't happy that I wasn't gonna have a professional degree. So I settled with law school and I was going to law school full time. And in the evenings, full time, I was running my own businesses. So I'd be in class all day and then I'd study. And then all night and all morning, I'd be running my own businesses. I was creating new e-commerce stores, working on new marketing things. And that's when I started really building this income and trying to build something more scalable. That way I can build something outside of just me. Once I figured out the system and after I had this 10 years of experience and trial and error and starting and making money and starting all over again, it didn't take me too long to get from zero to $100,000 a year, but that's when things started to get even more interesting. The first time now that I was making $10,000 a month, I felt broker than ever because I wanted to grow this even bigger. I took out as little cash as possible. I was living on the living room floor of my apartment. That way I'd only have to pay like $400 a month and that included my rent, my utilities, my internet, my cable, and my parking. So I was paying less than $400 a month to live here. I was keeping my costs as low as possible because I wanted to invest everything back into the business. So although I was making $100,000 a year on paper, I really wasn't using any of this money for myself. I was in school full time making more than $100,000 a year, but I was broke because I was using every dollar possible to grow the business, to invest my money. That way I could grow this into something bigger and I used very little of this money for myself. Like I was making $100,000, but I walked away with 10% of that. It took me a solid five to seven years from my first business in college to really know what it took to build something sustainable, to build something scalable and to build a real business. And it took me those 10 years of learning and failing and trying to really learn how it worked before I could build something a whole lot bigger. The failures and starting and stopping and starting and stopping make you feel like you're stepping back but these are things you have to go through in order to learn how to scale and in order to learn how to build because after i got to the hundred thousand dollar mark it was only a few years before i went from a hundred thousand to a million it's all a part of the process and it feels like forever when you're doing it because you keep feeling like you're starting and you're getting somewhere and then you start all over again but you keep learning along the way and you have to keep applying what you learn to the next thing if you enjoyed that then you're gonna love this everybody grows up with the dream and hope of being financially successful and for a lot of people that means hitting that six figure mark making a hundred thousand dollars before we get into how you can actually make a hundred thousand dollars let's clarify what a hundred thousand dollars means because there's a difference between making a hundred thousand dollars and making a hundred thousand dollars a year i mean if you have ten thousand dollars and you put it in the stock market and you get a little lucky and the stock that you invest in rallies that ten thousand dollars could turn into a hundred and ten thousand dollars and now if you sell that stock 
you made a hundred thousand dollar profit. Another example of this is you go into your gas station, you buy a Powerball ticket, and you get lucky and you win a hundred thousand dollars. Or your great uncle John dies with no kids and he really liked you, and so he leaves you with a hundred thousand dollar inheritance. In all of these examples, you made a hundred thousand dollars one time. And then you go out and you buy yourself a nice car, you buy a nice watch, you go on a vacation, and then three months later, after making $100,000, you are left with zero dollars. That's why in this video, I'm going to be focusing here, how you can make $100,000 a year, but there's also a difference between making $100,000 a year gross and making $100,000 a year net. If you go out and you work a job and you get a salary paying you $100,000 a year, that is $100,000 gross. But the government doesn't let you keep all of that money, right? The IRS wants their share, they want their taxes. And so if you make $100,000 a year, and let's assume you don't live in New York or California, the very high tax states, you are going to be left with right around $70,000 after paying your federal taxes, your social security taxes, your Medicare taxes, and your state income taxes. After you make $100,000 gross, you'll be left with $70,000. That's why if you want to keep $100,000, you need to make $100,000 net after taxes. So again, assuming you don't live in California or New York, one of those really high tax states, you will need to make about $140,000 before taxes from your job in order to make $100,000, wait, this one right here, $100,000 net. So if you want to keep $100,000, you need to make $140,000 before taxes from your job. And if you just want to make $100,000, then you can expect to make $70,000 after taxes. By the way, if you've ever heard people say it's not how much money you make that matters, it's how much money you keep, well, this is one of those reasons why, because everybody talks about making $100,000 a year, but just because you make $100,000 a year doesn't mean you get to keep $100,000 a year. Same with here. Just because you make $140,000 a year doesn't mean you get to keep all $140,000. The easiest way to achieve a goal is to break it down into bite-sized pieces. That way you understand exactly what you have to do in order to achieve that goal. So if your goal first is to make $100,000, this is $100,000 gross before taxes, that means that you have to make $274 a day seven days a week, 365 days a year. So you have to make $274, including weekends, including holidays, every single day on average in order to make $100,000. For some of you, you might be like, okay, well, how does that break down if I'm working five days a week and I take off three weeks a year for holidays? If that's the case, then you need to make $410 a day, five days a week, assuming you get three weeks off a year. So you're not working Saturdays and Sundays and you get three weeks off a year, then you have to make $410 per working day. And if you do that, you will make $100,000 in a year gross before paying any taxes. So you will make $100,000. If your goal is to keep $100,000, then the numbers are a little bit different. If you're talking about making money seven days a week, then you need to make $383 a day. And if we're talking about making money five days a week with three weeks off a year, then you need to make $571 a day for each of those working days in order to keep $100,000. At first glance, these numbers might seem unreasonable and you might be thinking, man, there's no way I'm gonna ever be able to make $100,000 or keep $100,000, but that's not the case. This is where financial education comes in handy because there's so many other ways to earn money where it's not just you physically working to make money at your job. There are other things that you can do and I'm gonna be talking about them in this video, but this is where understanding money is so helpful because you know what? There's a lot of money in the world. Like 1,700 people become millionaires every single day. That means there's a lot of people that are earning more wealth every single day because they understand how money works. And that's exactly what you need to understand. You need to first understand how money works and then create a system and a plan on how you are going to earn the money you need in order to make that six figure income. The thing that holds so many people back from ever achieving more financial success is not how hard you work or where you work or your degree or where you grew up or your ethnicity or your race. It's your mindset and your limiting beliefs. Because if you tell yourself that you can't do this, you are not going to be able to. You have already shut yourself down and it is not going to be possible for you to make $100,000 no matter what because you've already told yourself no. There's a lot of people that make $100,000 a year, but there's also some people that make $100,000 a month. 
and some people make a hundred thousand dollars a week and some people make a hundred thousand dollars a day and there are some people that make a hundred thousand dollars an hour now it's very hard for our minds to comprehend these type of numbers but this is the reality there's a lot of money in the world and so what you need to do first is stop giving yourself these limiting beliefs that you cannot do something and understand how you can do it the person who's earning a hundred thousand dollars a month isn't working 12 times harder than somebody making a hundred thousand dollars a year it's just not possible what the difference is is the amount of value you provide the reason why a cashier at mcdonald's makes minimum wage while lebron james earns millions and millions and millions of dollars a year is not because of how hard they work. I mean, they both work hard. The cashier has to work hard. Have you ever worked a minimum wage job before? It is very hard. The difference is how much value you provide. There are seven and a half billion people in the world that can take over that cashier position. That's why you were easily disposable. And because of that, you are going to be paid accordingly. Now, I'm not trying to say that as a human or that as a person that you don't have value. That is not what I'm trying to say. In the market, in the economy, you are easily dispensable because there are a lot of people that can do the exact same job. Versus LeBron James, there's very few people like LeBron James. And because of that, he can make a whole lot more money. So if your goal really is to make more money, then you have to think beyond just working harder. You need to think how you can make more value because if you can provide more value, you will naturally earn more money. There are five ways that you can create more value and hit that six figure mark or even a whole lot more depending on what your goals are and how much effort you're willing to put in. And these are things that you can do whether you're working a job or you wanna start a business or you wanna do a side hustle. So let's go over these five things. One is job growth. Two is investment investing in your career, three is investing your money, fourth is creating external value, and number five is starting your own business. I'm gonna be going over these five things starting with growth in your job. The most accessible way to do this is by growing in your job. And you can get this type of job growth whether you're in a very small company or in a big company. If you are in a big company, you wanna make sure you have the room for advancement, the room to grow. So maybe you start off as an associate, then you become a manager, then a director, then a vice president, and then maybe a corporate executive. So if you are going up the ranks and you keep working hard at your job, then you are gonna create more value at your job because now you have a lot more insider information in how to run the company, you know how to build the brand, and you create a lot more value at your position. And when you create more value, you are naturally gonna increase your income, and that's how you can hit that six-figure salary because now you're providing more value at your company because they don't want to lose you because you have built that tenure and you have built that reputation and you know how the company works so the company doesn't want to lose you and once you do that they will be willing to pay you a whole lot more if you're working at a smaller company you might not see that clear corporate ladder but what you will have is the opportunity to grow with a company you see this all the time with startups if you're working at a startup that's growing chances are you're going to see your salary grow or you're going to get revenue share or bonuses that grow with the company and very quickly as the company is growing you can see your income increase and if you are part of a growing company then you have a lot of kind of value in that company because you have helped build that company and if you help build a company you are going to see your income grow with the company as long as the company is growing with you the third alternative to getting this type of salary and job growth is working in sales because in sales it's really effort in money out if you can master the sales process and you have a good product and you practice your craft, you can get to that six-figure salary as a salesperson. I know quite a few seven-figure salespeople because they know how to sell, they know what they're doing, and they have built a lot of trust with their clients. And so now they can make a great income because they know how to sell and they have built that growth through their efforts. The value that they provide is that they have put in all the time and the effort and the money learning how to sell the right way and they have perfected their craft. This isn't something that happens overnight but it is possible for somebody who wants it second you can invest in your profession to increase your salary so let me give you kind of a more personal example because i'm an attorney if you are a paralegal so paralegals are people that work with attorneys you might be making 40 45 thousand dollars a year but if you invest in your education and you go become an attorney and you invest that time into learning well now as an attorney you can make hundred forty thousand dollars a year just because you invested in your profession. You invested in your education with money and time, and if you do that, now you can increase your salary. The reason this happens, again, is not how hard you worked, but because of how much value that you can provide. Both paralegals and attorneys both work hard, but not as many people are going to invest that time or that money going through law school, getting their law degree, that way they can actually work as an attorney versus becoming a paralegal. You don't have to run through all those hoops. The reason this is becoming a little bit more important now is because back in the day, having a college degree was a big deal because not a lot of people had college degrees. 
Nowadays, having a college degree is almost like baseline, that is like standard. So if you want to stick out, you need more of a professional degree or a higher level degree, which costs more money, it takes more time, but this is the reality of the society that we're in. If you want to work a job and you want to earn a higher salary, you need to be able to separate yourself from the rest of the crowd. One way to do this is to get a higher degree, maybe a law degree or an MBA or a medical degree, whatever it is, something that can help you define a higher salary. Another way to do this is to invest in your profession through something outside of the traditional education system. Maybe that means getting certified or getting some other continuing education. Something that you can show people where you have more value that you can provide now because you have the certain education that a lot of other people don't. The second option works great for a lot of people because you don't need to invest as much money as you would if you wanted to get an MBA or a JD and you don't have to invest that much time. You can do this on the side. For example, you can go online and get a certificate in understanding data science and now you can make a six figure salary because you have the certificate and you didn't have to go back to school in order to do that and you didn't have to pay a school's tuition. What an employer looks for, and I'll tell you from personal experience, is people that are good at doing specific tasks. If you can show your boss or an employer that you are very valuable because you're very good at doing something, you're gonna be able to make a whole lot more money. The reason that people who graduate school with general degrees, like a general psychology degree, I can say this because I graduated college with a general psychology degree, struggle getting a good job is because it's very hard for an employer to understand what your skill set is. What is it that you're good at? Where can you provide the most value? If you don't know or cannot show where you can provide this value, then you're going to be compensated accordingly. That's why if you can get one of these certificates or get a higher degree or invest in your profession, that way you can demonstrate that you're good at something and have experience in something, you are going to be able to make more money. Third, let's talk about investing your money. That way you can hit that six figure mark. So number three and number four are going to be supplemental to one and two. That means you can do these things in addition to one and two to help you hit that six figure mark because you can supplement your salary with number three and number four. When you invest your money, so this is typically we're talking about stock market investing or real estate investing. When you invest your money, you're putting your money to work. And the good thing about this is your money doesn't need sleep, it doesn't need rest, it doesn't need to go to the bathroom, and it doesn't need vacations. Your money can work and earn your money seven days a week, 365 days a year, and it doesn't need a break. The thing that you have to understand about investing your money is you need to have realistic expectations of the type of returns you're gonna get with your money, because if you don't, then you're gonna be lured into risky investments and get rich quick schemes and things that just lose you money. If we're talking a completely passive investment, right now all you're doing is you are throwing your money into an investment, whether it's stocks or real estate, then a good return based off of your money investment, not your time, just your money, is something like a 7% annual return. So if you invest $100, expect to make $7 back a year. This doesn't mean that you have to make 7% every single year on your money. This means on average, over the long term, you are making 7%. Some years are going to be more, some years are less, but on average, it's 7%. So if your goal is to make $100,000 a year, based off of the 7% return, then you have to invest $1.4 million. And then if you do that, you will be able to make $100,000 a year. That's why this is something you need to do to supplement your income, because this is something that's going to take time to build. Because if you consistently keep investing your money every single month, you are going to build a nest egg that is earning you money and that is supplementing your income. That way you can get to the six figure mark. Maybe your goal is to start off by just making an extra $100 a month. Once you can do that, then you can up that goal to how do you make $1,000 a month and then $2,000 a month. It's all baby steps. I already made a video where I talked about how you can start earning passive income with a $1,000 investment. So if you wanna watch that video, I will link it for you in the description below. There's two things that I want you to understand about these type of money investments. One is how do you get a better return? And two, the taxes that you pay, how much money you actually keep on this money. Let me start with the taxes part because I'm weird and I like talking about taxes, but I'll keep it simple and brief. When you invest your money, the government gives you a tax break because they say, okay, this money that you earn from your job, you already paid taxes on this money. So now when you invest this money that you earn, you should be able to get a tax break when this money makes you money. The only caveat here is you have to hold your investment for longer than a year, but if you make money from your investments and you hold your investments for longer than a year, then you get to pay much lower tax rates. That's why rich people and wealthy people put all their emphasis here. They want to know how they can make more money from their investments because when you make money from your investments, you get to keep more of your money because you don't have to pay as much money in taxes legally. So the good thing about this is this is something you can do completely passively. You just throw your money into your investments 
and you get to pay less money in taxes, which means you get to keep more of your money that you make because you've already paid taxes on the money that you earn from your job. So now when you're making money from your investments, you get lower tax rates because the government wants to incentivize you to invest your money and build your wealth. Second, if you want to get a better return on your money investments, well, then what you can do is invest more of your time. So now what you can do is look out for other business investments or look out for other real estate investments where you have to invest more time. Maybe you find a beat up property that needs more work. Now you have to invest your time and your money and so you can get a better return on your money or you can find a business that needs help. If you have some expertise that you can help this business with, now you can get a much better return on your money because now you're investing your money, you get some ownership in the business and then you can help this business turn around, make more money and as they do that, you will get a better return on your money okay the seven percent number is a completely passive investment you're throwing your money in the stock market or real estate and you are just trying to get a passive return if you want to be more active with your investments then you can get a better return but now this requires your money and your time fourth let's talk about external value how can you create value outside of the job that you're working at right now that way you can attract more money well, one way that you can do this is by working a second job. If you work a second job, now you have two different jobs, two different incomes, and if they're both paying you $50,000 a year, now you have just hit that six-figure annual income mark, but now you have to be working 15-hour days. If you love what you do, then it's no big deal. But another thing that you can consider is potentially starting a side hustle. The side hustle is something that you're doing outside of your job, that you're doing on your free time and on weekends to help you supplement your income by doing something that you're good at. So you like this thing, you are good at something, and you create value out of it, and now your goal is to make money through this value that you have created. Before I really buckled down and learned how to build a business, I was a true side hustler. These are things that I thought were businesses, but they really were just side hustles. I used to work at weddings, I used to have an event planning business. I used to have an Amazon side hustle. I used to do real estate wholesaling. These are all things that I did that I thought were businesses, but they were really just side hustles. When you're working to create a side hustle, what you want to find is where can you provide unique value to the world? What is something that you can do that a lot of people cannot do? So when I used to work at weddings, what I did was play a drum called the dole at Indian weddings. So kind of niche because not a lot of people knew how to play their dole around me. And a lot of Indian weddings had the need for a dole player like me. And so when I got good at it, I was charging people like $250, $300 for 30 minutes to an hour's worth of me playing. So I was making pretty good money, especially as a 20 year old college kid playing the dole. But what you weren't paying me for was my time. You were not paying me for 30 minutes of work or an hour's worth of work. You were paying me for my years of experience and for my knowledge on how to play a dole. It took me a long time to learn how to play it and I had this value which is why I could charge a lot of money for a very short amount of time. Nowadays because of the internet it is so much more accessible to create a side hustle because you can do it on your laptop, you can do it on your phone, you can do it on your own time and you can do it from anywhere in the world. If you have a certain skill or knowledge that you want to give to the world well then you can create a class on Udemy and let people buy it. If you have certain skills that you want to help other businesses with, like maybe you're a good writer or you're a good coder or you're a good developer, or maybe you are really good at building financial spreadsheets, you can go to a freelance platform like Fiverr or Upwork or one of these places and you can market your services. Now people and businesses that need your help can hire you and you can do the work on your own time, you can set your prices and now you've just created a new side hustle without leaving your house. There is an unlimited amount of possibility here. If you have something that you like, something that you can provide value you in, I can pretty much guarantee that you can find a way to monetize it. I mean, there are even side hustles for people to go and sleep and test out beds. So if you have something that you like and you like doing, there's a way that you can monetize it. And if you do want to learn more about how you can create other side hustles, our team put together an awesome article on 113 ways that you can create a side hustle and earn extra money. If you want to read the article, you can do it on our website, theminoritymindset.com, and I'll also link it for you up here and in the description below. What you're doing now is creating external value outside of your job, that way you can attract more money, that way you can hit or break the six-figure annual income. And finally, number five, you can start a business to build that six-figure income. So this can start off as your side hustle and if it grows and evolves and it develops and you make more money from your side hustle than you do your job, that side hustle can become your business because then you can quit your job and put all of your effort into your side hustle and help grow that into a real business. 
but let me give you a word of caution. Starting a business is not easy. I don't care what kind of business you're trying to start. It is not easy easy to build a business. I'm not saying this to scare you. I just want you to understand because there's a lot of, let's call it crap on the internet of people promoting this whole idea that you can start a business with 40 minutes a day and then you can make six figures doing almost nothing. It does not work like that. If you want to build a successful business, you have to be obsessed. And that means you are going to be working six, seven days a week, every single week. And you're also going to have your business on your mind during holidays, during weekends, during nights. So your business is going to be on your mind all the time. So if you want to build a business, you have to understand that you have to have the entrepreneurial bug. It is not for everybody, but if it is for you, if you love the idea of building your own business and being your own boss, then by all means, go for it. When it comes to building a business, you need to understand the numbers. So let's say you start a business where you sell mugs. So this kind of looks like a mug. And let's say that each mug you sell for $10. Now, if you sell this mug for $10, you also have a cost. You have a cost to make the mug and to package the mug and ship the mug. Let's say after all of your expenses, which cost you, let's say $4, you are left with $6 of profit. So if you want to hit that six figure salary, you need to first multiply this out. If you're making $6 a mug, that means you have to sell about 17,000 mugs over the course of the year in order to hit that six figure profit. And in order to sell 17,000 mugs over a year, that means you have to sell about 46 mugs a day in order to hit that 17,000 mugs a year, which is about $100,000 in profit. At this point, what a lot of people think is, okay, if I wanna sell 46 mugs a day, good thing my store is online because my store is open 24 hours a day then, that means I need to sell something like two mugs an hour. If I need to sell two mugs an hour, how much money do I need to spend on advertising to sell two mugs an hour? If I'm running advertisements and it costs me $4 to get a customer, then yeah, my margins come down, but I can hit that 46 mugs a day, but then I'm gonna have to sell more mugs in order to hit that profit. But if I can run advertisements and spend $4 per customer to get a sale, well then all I gotta do is just scale that up. In theory, yeah, it works and it all sounds easy, but in reality, it's not so simple. So let's assume for the sake of this example that you made $100 thousand dollars in profit after selling mugs so you sold a bunch of mugs and you still have a hundred thousand dollars in your bank account one thing that you have to do now is decide are you going to pay yourself a salary if so how much so let's say you pay yourself a forty thousand dollar salary which leaves you with sixty thousand dollars in the bank account now you might be thinking, well, this profit is yours because you own the business, you run the business, so you can take the $60,000 and put it in your bank account because you have $100,000 of profit. But you have to remember, if you're building a business, you wanna have money to invest in your business and you wanna have money to help kind of protect your business in case of an emergency. And so if you want to grow the business, it would be better for you to take the $60,000 and actually invest it back into the business. Maybe you hire an employee, maybe you create a new mug line. You wanna do something where this is gonna help you earn more money. And so this is where you have to really understand the dynamics of a business because every dollar you pull out is a dollar that you cannot use to grow the business. So you have to understand that it's not as easy as just having $100,000 in your bank account to earn $100,000. But on the flip side, there's no limit to how much money you can make if you start a business because there's no limit to how many mugs you can sell. You can sell 46 mugs a day. You can sell 460 mugs a day. You can sell 4,600 mugs a day. So there's no limit and it really comes down to how big you want to grow your business and how much effort you're willing to put in and how good your product is. Thank you for watching. Here's a video on things you need to do in your 30s to build wealth in your 40s and while you're at it, download our free guide on how to start generating passive income and as always, keep hustling. There's a lot more to becoming wealthy than just having a big salary. I mean, it can help, but if you don't know how to use your money or if you don't have the right patience, then it doesn't really mean anything.